Why does the Lord speak to the Samaritan woman in John chapter 4? Let me rephrase the question. Why does the Lord speak to the Samaritan woman in John chapter 4 when he refuses to speak to the woman of Canaan in Matthew 15? So let's try to understand what's going on. Get with me John chapter 4, verse 5. John 4, verse 5. Then cometh he to a city of Samaria, which is called Sychar, near to the parcel of ground that Jacob gave to his son Joseph. Now Jacob's well was there. Jesus, therefore, being wearied with his journey, sat thus on the well, and it was about the sixth hour. There cometh a woman of Samaria to draw water. Jesus saith unto her, Give me to drink. Verse 8, For his disciples were gone away unto the city to buy meat. Then saith the woman of Samaria unto him, How is it that thou, being a Jew, askest drink of me, which am a woman of Samaria? For the Jews have no dealings with the Samaritans. Now it's pretty clear in that passage that the Lord is having a conversation with the woman of Samaria. Let's contrast that with Matthew 15, verse 21. Matthew chapter 15 and verse 21. Then Jesus went thence and departed into the coasts of Tyre and Sidon. And behold, a woman of Canaan came out of the same coast and cried unto him, saying, Have mercy on me, O Lord, thou son of David. My daughter is grievously vexed with the devil. But he answered her not a word. The woman of Canaan in Matthew 15, when she comes to him, even acknowledging him as the son of David, he won't answer her even a word. He doesn't speak to her at all. In John chapter 4, he initiates a conversation with the Samaritan woman. There's something very different going on between those two situations. Now let's read Matthew 15, 23 again. But he answered her not a word, and his disciples came and besought him, saying, Send her away, for she crieth after us. Verse 24. But he answered and said, I am not sent, but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. So in Matthew 15, the Lord gives his reasoning. He says, I'm not going to speak to the woman of Canaan. Why? I'm only sent to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Therefore, I'm not going to talk to her. So that brings about the following question. Why does the Lord speak to the Samaritan woman in John 4, but he won't even answer the woman of Canaan in Matthew 5? Well, here's the short answer, and then we'll study it more fully. The short answer is the Lord wouldn't speak to Gentiles, but Samaritans are not Gentiles. Samaritans are Israelites. They are members of the northern kingdom and part of the lost sheep of the house of Israel. So let's study that more fully. Get Matthew chapter 10, verse 5. Matthew chapter 10, verse 5. These twelve Jesus sent forth and commanded them, saying, Go not into the way of the Gentiles, and into any city of the Samaritans enter ye not, but go rather to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Now notice in Matthew 10, there's a distinction between Gentiles and Samaritans. The Lord says not to go into the way of the Gentiles at all. Go not into the way of the Gentiles, period. 
But with Samaritans, he says something different. And into any city of the Samaritans enter ye not. What that clearly tells you is Samaritans are obviously not the same thing as Gentiles because the Lord is treating them differently. He says, go not into the way of the Gentiles, period. With Samaritans, he only says, don't go into their cities. Now, we need to understand why that is. Get with me Luke chapter 9, verse 51. Luke 9, 51. And it came to pass, when the time was come that he should be received up, he steadfastly set his face to go to Jerusalem and sent messengers before his face, and they went, now notice this, and entered into a village of the Samaritans to make ready for him. The disciples, according to Luke 9, what is it that they do? They go into a village of the Samaritans. Well, doesn't that contradict what the Lord said in Matthew 10? Because in Matthew 10, he said, go not into any city of the Samaritans. So why are the disciples doing what they're doing? Well, let's understand the definition of what a village is. This definition comes from Webster's 1828 Dictionary. A village is a small assemblage of houses less than a town or city and inhabited chiefly by farmers and other laboring people. So what a village is, and we typically understand this, a village is something smaller than a city. Well, why does that matter? Well, that helps us understand that Luke 9 is not a contradiction of Matthew 10, because Matthew 10 said, into any city, Of the Samaritans enter ye not. Well, in Luke 9, the disciples didn't go into a city, they went into a village. So it's not a contradiction. But of course, that does raise the question well, why is it that they can go into a village, but not into a city? So we're going to have to keep looking at that. Get with me John chapter 4, verse 3. John chapter 4, verse 3. So we want to go back to John chapter 4 for a couple minutes. John 4, verse 3. He left Judea and departed again into Galilee. And he must needs go through Samaria. Verse 5. Then cometh he to a city of Samaria, which is called Sychar, near to the parcel of ground that Jacob gave to his son Joseph. Now, you might read that, and you might think, wait a minute. Did did Jesus Christ violate his own commandment in Matthew 10? Matthew 10, he said, into any city the Samaritans enter ye not. But in John 4, it says that he cometh to a city of Samaria. You might think that verse 5 is the Lord going into the city, but let's keep reading. John chapter 4, verse 6. Now Jacob's well was there. Jesus, therefore, being wearied with his journey, sat thus on the well, and it was about the sixth hour. Verse 8. For his disciples were gone away unto the city to buy meat. Well, verse 8 makes it clear. This well isn't in the city. The Lord's at the well, and the disciples went unto the city. Now, notice this very carefully. So the first thing we learned is the Lord himself didn't go into the city. Now, you might read verse 8 and say, well, yeah, the Lord didn't, but the disciples did. Because the disciples were gone away unto the city. But notice that it says unto, not into. What did the disciples do? They went closer to the city, they got near it, but they didn't go into it. Look at verse 9. Then saith the woman of Samaria unto him, How is it that thou, being a Jew, 
askest drink of me, which am a woman of Samaria, for the Jews have no dealings with the Samaritans. So that verse says the Jews have no dealings with the Samaritans, and many think that that must mean that the Samaritans are not Israelites, but as we'll see, the Samaritans are very clearly Israelites. Look down with me at verse 20. John chapter 4, verse 20. Our fathers worshipped in this mountain, and ye say that in Jerusalem is the place where men ought to worship. Verse 22. Ye worship, ye know not what. We know what we worship, for salvation is of the Jews. Verse 28. The woman then left her water pot and went her way into the city. So obviously this well was not inside the city because the woman had to leave there to go into the city. And saith to the men, now go down to verse 30, Then they went out of the city and came unto him. So the, what we notice from John chapter 4 is the Lord never entered into the city of the Samaritans. He always remained outside, as did the disciples. So what we now need to do is we need to look a little more carefully at what the Samaritans are. Get with me Acts chapter 7, verse 59. Acts chapter 7 and verse 59. And they stoned Stephen, calling upon God and saying, Lord Jesus, receive my spirit. Stephen is obviously stoned at the end of Acts chapter 7. Acts chapter 8, verse 1. Acts chapter 8, verse 1. And Saul was consenting unto his death. And at that time, there was a great persecution against the church, which was at Jerusalem. And they were all scattered abroad throughout the regions of Judea and Samaria, except the apostles. So what that verse is telling us is that when Stephen is stoned, there's a great persecution against the kingdom church, and they're scattered out of Jerusalem. Where do they go? They go to both Judea and Samaria. Look with me at verse 4. Therefore, they that were scattered abroad went everywhere preaching the word. So when the kingdom church is scattered out of Jerusalem, they're scattered into Judea and Samaria, and wherever they go, they're preaching the word. Verse 5, Then Philip went down to the city of Samaria and preached Christ unto them. So in Acts 8, 5, Philip obviously goes to Samaria, and it describes him here as going to the city of Samaria. So how can that be? Because didn't we read in Matthew chapter 10 that when the Lord sent out the twelve, he told them, into any city of the Samaritans enter ye not. But what does Philip do? He goes to the city of Samaria. How can he do that? Is, is he violating the Lord's instructions in Matthew 10? Well, there's an answer. Look with me at Acts chapter 1, verse 8. Acts chapter 1 and verse 8. But ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost is come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and in all Judea and in Samaria, and notice this, and unto the uttermost part of the earth. Acts 1 is a big change from Matthew 10. If you recall Matthew 10, he, the Lord said, go not into the way of the Gentiles. In other words, the Lord was telling the 12, I don't want you to go out to the Gentile nations. I don't want you to do that. But in Acts 1, the Lord says, go unto the uttermost part of the earth. And that's clearly going to Gentile nations. Acts 1 is a further revelation. It's a change in what 
the kingdom church was supposed to do, and they were now permitted to go under the Gentile nations. What that tells you is the Lord viewed the cities of the Samaritans as going into the way of the Gentiles. Get with me Acts chapter 2, verse 5. Acts chapter 2, verse 5. Now, one thing we need to understand is when the kingdom church is sent to the utter post, uttermost parts of the earth, when it is sent to all nations, it is being sent to the Jews which are among the nations. It's not being sent to Gentiles directly. How do I know that? Look at Acts chapter 2, verse 5. And there were dwelling at Jerusalem Jews, devout men, notice this, out of every nation under heaven. At the time of the Lord's earthly ministry, where were Jews located? Well, they were located not just in Judea, they were located in every nation of the earth. Why were they located in every nation of the earth? The reason why is that one of the curses that was placed upon Old Testament Israel and Judah for their disobedience is that they were to be scattered among the nations. So when we find ourselves in Acts 2, where are the Jews? They are scattered among all of the nations. Look with me at Acts chapter 10, verse 28. Now, Acts 10, verse 28, is obviously after Acts 1. That's pretty obvious. In Acts 1, the Lord says unto the disciples, He says unto them that they should go unto the uttermost part of the earth. Well, that's the whole earth is what He's saying. But notice Acts 10, 28. This is Peter speaking. And He said unto them, Ye know how that it is an unlawful thing for a man that is a Jew to keep company or come unto one of another nation. Well, how are they going to not go into one of another nation if they go into the uttermost parts of the earth? Well, the reconciliation of those two verses is, is, is obvious. When the kingdom church was sent out, they were sent into all the earth, as Acts 1, 8 describes. But when they go to those nations, they're going to the Jews within those nations, the diaspora, the Jews that were scattered among the nations. Get Acts 11, verse 19. Acts 11, verse 19. Now they which were scattered abroad upon the persecution that arose about Stephen traveled as far as Phoenix and Cyprus and Antioch, preaching the word to none but unto the Jews only. Now think about this really carefully. In Acts 8, after Stephen was stoned, a persecution arose against the kingdom church. We know that. That was described in Acts 8.1. And the kingdom church was scattered, and they went into Judea and Samaria. Specifically says that in Acts chapter 8, verse 1. Acts 11 makes clear when the kingdom church is scattered and they go everywhere preaching the word, as Acts 8 describes, who did they preach unto? Acts eleven nineteen 19 says they preached unto the Jews only. That means that when the kingdom church was scattered into Samaria, they did preach to Samaritans, but who did they preach to? Only the Samaritans that were Jews. That tells you that at least some of the Samaritans must be Jews. Get Acts 15, verse 2. Acts 15, verse 2. When therefore Paul and Barnabas had no small dissension and disputation with them, they determined that Paul and Barnabas and certain other of them should go up to Jerusalem 
unto the apostles and elders about this question. So Paul and Barnabas are going to travel from Antioch down to Jerusalem. Notice verse 3, and, bring, and being brought on their way by the church, they pass through Phoenix and Samaria, declaring the conversion of the Gentiles, and they caused great joy unto all the brethren. So Paul travels through Samaria and declares the conversion of the Gentiles. Well, doesn't that tell you that the Samaritans weren't Gentiles, or that verse really doesn't make any sense? Those Samaritans have to be Jews. Paul doesn't have to declare to the Gentiles the conversion of the Gentiles. They get that. What he's doing is he's declaring unto the Samaritans the conversion of the Gentiles, and he's doing that because they are Jews. So let's return to our original question. Why does the Lord speak to the Samaritan woman in John 4 when he refuses to speak to the woman of Canaan in Matthew 15? Well, the obvious answer is the Samaritan woman is an Israelite, while the woman of Canaan is a Gentile. Samaritans are Israelites in the region of the northern kingdom of Israel. You recall that in the Old Testament, during the reign of Rehoboam, Israel was split into two kingdoms. There was the northern kingdom and the southern kingdom. Samaritans is a reference to the Israelites, to the, the Jews that reside in the region of the northern kingdom. Now that still leaves us with this question. Why did the Lord instruct the twelve not to preach in the cities of Samaria? Because he clearly allowed them to preach in the villages of the Samaritans. Why is that? Well, get with me 1 Kings 13, verse 32. I want to show you something that I don't think is the explanation first. 1 Kings 13, verse 32. For the saying which he cried by the word of the Lord against the altar in Bethel and against all the houses of the high places which are in the cities of Samaria shall surely come to pass. What 1 Kings says about the cities of Samaria is that they have these high places given over to idolatry. And so one possible reason that the Lord says to the twelve, don't go into the cities of Samaria, is because those cities are given to idolatry. Now the, the, the reason that I don't think that is the explanation, look with me at Jeremiah 32, verse 35. Jeremiah chapter 32 and verse 35. And they built the high places of Baal, which are in the valley of the son of Hinnom, to cause their sons and the daughters to pass through the fire unto Moloch, which I commanded them not. Neither came it into my mind that they should do this abomination to cause Israel to sin. It's true from 1 Kings that the cities of Samaria are given over to idolatry. But the reason I don't think that's why the Lord prohibits going into the cities of Samaria is that what problem did Judah also have? Judah also had a problem with idolatry. Look with me at Micah chapter 1 and verse 5. Micah chapter 1 and verse 5. For the transgression of Jacob is all this, and for the sins of the house of Israel. What is the transgression of Jacob? Is it not Samaria? And what are the high places of Judah? Are they not Jerusalem? So is Samaria given over to idolatry? Yes, it is. The cities of Samaria are. But notice also that Judah was also given over to idolatry. So what's the explanation? Why does the Lord permit 
the, the disciples to go into the villages of Samaria, but not the cities. Get with me 2 Kings chapter 17 and verse 24. 2 Kings chapter 17, verse 24. And the king of Assyria brought men from Babylon and from Cutha and from Ava and from Hamath and from Sepharzaim and placed them in the cities of Samaria instead of the children of Israel. And they possessed Samaria and dwelt in the cities thereof. What is that verse saying? Well, the king of Assyria, what did he do? He brought men from Babylon. Those are Gentiles. And what did he do with them? He placed them in the cities of Samaria. And not, did, not only did he place them in the cities of Samaria, instead of the children of Israel. In other words, what happened is the king of Assyria moved all of the Samaritans, all of the members of the northern kingdom, the, the Jews that resided in the northern kingdom, he moved all of them out of the cities, and he put in men from Babylon. Look with me at verse 26. Wherefore they spake to the king of Assyria, saying, saying The nations which thou hast removed and placed in the cities of Samaria. Very clearly, there were na Gentile nations that were taken and placed, it specifically says, into the cities, not the villages, the cities of Samaria. Verse 29. 2 Kings 17, 29. Howbeit every nation made gods of their own and put them in the houses of the high places which the Samaritans had made. Notice, every nation in their cities wherein they dwelt. What 2 Kings 17 is making very clear is that when the northern kingdom in other words, Israel, not, not the southern kingdom of Judah, but the northern kingdom of Israel, when it is conquered by Assyria, what does the king of Assyria do? All of the Samaritans, he forces them out of the cities and replaces them with Gentiles. Get, Ezek get, get Ezra. Ezra chapter 4. And verse 10. Ezra chapter 4 and verse 10. And the rest of the nations whom the great and noble Asnapper brought over and set in the cities of Samaria. All those verses are very clear as to what happened. What, what the king of Assyria did is he forced the Samaritans, he forced the Jews of the northern kingdom out of the cities, and he replaced them with Gentiles. Well, that gives us our answer, doesn't it? The Lord Jesus Christ said in Matthew 15, 24, I am not sent, but unto the lost sheep of the house of Israel. He was sent to all of Israel. He was sent to all Jews, whether they were in the southern kingdom of Judah, whether they were in the northern kingdom of Israel. Well, the reason why he and the twelve went to the villages of the Samaritans is there were the lost sheep of the house of Israel there. They didn't go into the cities of the Samaritans because the cities of the Samaritans had been occupied for some time by Gentiles. So that's the explanation. Why does the Lord speak to the Samaritan woman in John 4? Well, the reason why is she's an Israelite. The Lord Jesus Christ was sent to the lost sheep of the house of Israel. Why didn't he speak to the Gentile woman in Matthew 15? Because he wasn't sent to the Gentiles. And if you look very carefully at what the disciples do during the Lord's earthly ministry, they don't go into the cities.
cities of the Samaritans. Why? Because the cities of the Samaritans are occupied by Gentiles. They do go into the villages of the Samaritans. But in Acts chapter 1, after the cross, after the resurrection, when the, Lord's, when the Lord sends the kingdom church to the uttermost parts of the earth, at that point, they can go into the cities of Samaria. But when they do, who are they always going to under the kingdom program? They're going unto the Jews that are scattered among the nations. Now today we live in the dispensation of grace. During the dispensation of grace, Romans 10:12 says, there's no difference between Jew and Greek. Romans 1:16 says, for I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ, for it is the power of God unto salvation to everyone that believeth, to the Jew first and also to the Greek. Study these things out. Let every man be fully persuaded in his own mind.